Thank you so much. And uh, once again, thank you for uh, this invitation and, uh, and uh, for your invitation here uh, and to uh, meet again with uh, 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 friends and colleagues that uh, uh, I met so many times in different uh, other occasions. So as we only have 15 minutes, I, I'm just going to highlight some of the points that I, I, I wanted to make in order, in fact, in our discussions to be able to, uh, um, uh, to, uh, to discuss them. As an introduction, I have four points that I think are important from where I'm speaking because I'm tackling the issue of open space and visibility. And for me, over time, I've been involved, in fact, not from only from within an academic uh, framework, but on the ground. Um, in fact, it, through the discussion about this new visibility of Muslims in, in, the, in the West, that I came back to question uh, even the way we are putting uh, the questions and the way we are tackling the problem. So I think it will be clearer in the way I'm going to discuss this. So about the question of more or less secularism, uh, through the discussions that you had with politicians, intellectuals, and within academia, you understand that at the end of the day, uh, sometimes we want to come to something which is the right definition of secularism. And you understand that at the end, the whole discussion is that you might come with an understanding of what secularization was in historical terms, but you have no discourse which is void from ideological take on secularism. So this ideological take is, and the way I think uh, we have to respond to this, and, and when I'm listening to uh, Tariq Moudoud, I think that it's an ideological answer to an ideological interpretation. So these are two interpretations uh, that are here that I, I, I can't see any uh, scientific or academic or neutral, and I will come to this term later, uh, definition of what we are talking about and even the concept, if you go to France and you speak about moderate secularism, you are going to be out of the discussion straight away. What does it mean? What are you doing? And, and in fact, ideologically, they would put you outside the, uh, the, the, the discussion or the in fact, they will put you ideologically outside what they call a scientific discussion. If you take, so at, at the end, my discussion here is just, we are dealing with ideologies and we have to deal with it. And this is why I would like in uh, academic terms to, to uh, position, to reposition the whole discussion. The second point that I wanted to say here is that I think that it's through the historical pr process of this new visibility of Muslims in the West that we came uh, uh, back to the discussion. Uh, uh, and in fact, visibility is revealing the whole process. In fact, it through perception and ideological take or translation of these perceptions that we are now uh, dealing with the issue. And very often, the first answer is the legal framework we come back to the legal framework. And, and mainly all the discussions that we have in the West is uh, we, we speak about multiculturalism, we speak about diversity, we speak about pluralism, but at the end, we tend to reduce the discussion. So, so what is going to be the legal framework? Uh, that we are going to deal with in order to help the people to, uh, for example, uh, express themselves to deal with this visibility. And I think that uh, that's the wrong answer. As much as I think that it has to be part of the discussion, if you are not talking, I have, for example, from within, as, as a Muslim scholar, I have been involved in this, about, in this discussion for, for 25 years. It's in fact, in which way we are going to prove that in legal terms, we don't have a problem with secular, secularism. And I think, at the end, we can prove that we don't have a problem, but the problem remains. It's not a, it's not a legal discussion. It's not. It's something which is deeper than that. Uh, uh, in the way uh, the legal dimension is used from an ideological take and even in the way we are defining the nation, who we are. So I think that this is here a very important point, and this is why, even in the discussion, the discussion that you are raising right now is as which, what is the difference and how are we going to deal with cultures and religions. It's exactly the point. It's not, it has nothing to do with the legal. It's our perception of the religious presence in our societies. And I would say that in Europe we have a problem defining this. So we can have any discussion about secularism if we are not 
tackling the issue about religion per se and not confusing religion with cultures, we are going to miss the point. And I think that very often we are missing the point. So, um, the, and my third point here, having said this, it could seem quite confusing, and it is. So I think that the first thing that we have to do in this discussion is to clarify the concepts and to bring some clarity into the discussion. Uh, and for example, uh, I would say that the first thing that now I think I, I have to do in any discussion with politicians and intellectuals is to define the terminology and to clarify the objectives of what do we mean by this. So I'm not going from a legal viewpoint, my question is, we are, or, or the way I put it, we are living in pluralistic societies, willing it or not, what is the objective? What do we want to achieve together? And from here, I tackle the discussion about uh, secularism, about uh, secularity, the legal framework, but not only, because I think now that what we are uh, dealing with is a deeper question about our common narrative, is the way we define ourselves. And we use the legal framework to define ourselves in an exclusive way by people and sometimes in an exclusive way. The moderate secularism of Tariq Maudoud is inclusive. And secular is the way we can see it by some people, for example, in the political uh, 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 spectrum. It's exclusive. It's the way you are defining who is within and who is outside. So, so that's also a discussion and then the practical steps that uh, uh, we, uh, we have to, uh, to go through in, in, in tackling these issues. So these are my first points as an introduction. And my first part will be uh, also to look at uh, uh, the historical processes and, and the way we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, secularization. As much as we have it in a clear way, the process of secularization was to differentiate between authorities, the state of authority, the, the, the authority of the state and the authority of religions. And on this, you can say whatever you want, for example, from an Islamic perspective, saying, I don't have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with separating authority. So it means that I don't have a problem with the process of secularization. It might be in, in whatever it is and with all the differences. The US uh, uh, process has nothing to do with the different European process because even the French one has nothing to do with the British one. It's not the same. We're not talking about the same thing, by the way. So I think that here, by saying in principle and an overall discussion, we don't have a problem with the process of separation between the two authority, which could define uh, uh, secularization uh, um, in fact, uh, today, in the States, as much as in any other uh, countries, the, 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 the big discussion is separating the two authorities, but at the end, the problem is our way of defining religion in the whole process today. So religion is the problem. So you can't speak about secularism and say, okay, you know, you have to come to religion. And this is why, for example, in Kimlika, there is a problem. Oh, culture is not exactly the same as religion. So we speak about cultures in multiculturalism, but religion is not exactly somewhere. It's lost in the discussion. And I think that this is where I think it's very important what Tariq Mudud is doing, say, no, we have to bring it in. That, that's a process which is so important. That's fine. But it's not because we are saying we have to bring it in that we, have, we find the solution. Because still, the meaning, the role, and the status of religion within our secular societies has to be tackled. This is a big discussion. Because now you have citizens coming and saying, look, this is the way I also define myself, and you have to take it seriously. So it's not only a status that you have to integrate, it's a, a, a meaning, it's a way of life, that, or it's a perception, it's a philosophy, that it's part of the whole process. In fact, Religions are not only to be put as something which you have to add to cultures, but religions are questioning cultures. So it's not only an added factor. It's the way you are going to define our common narrative when it comes to, uh, 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 for example, the Western culture or the American culture from within. Uh, the, there are two things that I wanted to say here, and I'm, I'm quite, uh, and this is why I'm very happy that we have something which is going beyond Europe. Uh, because wherever you go in Europe, you say you have something which is idealizing what is happening in the States, for example. Oh, you know, you have high front identity. That's not true. That's not true. What is happening today in the States is very 
complicated and the tensions are now very deep, exactly where you have this presence of uh, the cultural diversity and the religious diversity and Muslims there are facing many problems not on the legal framework, because it's not only the legal framework, is how do we define being an American? And the hyphen uh, uh, identity and the way. So I would say that uh, if you go through the world today, uh, what we have is two things that we are sharing everywhere. And this is where we have to come to a, a, a clearer discussion about the, the, or at least definitions of the terminology that we have. In the globalized world, you go to India, as you go to African countries, or to the United States of America, or to Europe, we have two things that are everywhere, politics of identity and politics of fear. That's everywhere. So we, we should not idealize anything. I went to India, and what I saw on the ground is also the same temptations towards something which is politics of identity. That's there. So I think that we should study we should even study what happened in, in Eastern Europe, and I always said to Western Europeans, be careful with your uh, neglectfulness towards the East, Eastern Europe, but at the end, we also are seeing on the ground, just coming from Montenegro, the discussions that I had there are very similar to what we are experiencing now about politics of fear, this perception, and then also identity politics. So once again, these are also things that are important in our discussion. And I would say here that the starting point of this discussion, coming from visibility and saying we are in pluralistic society and willing it or not, this new stage where now pluralistic societies should start with acknowledging this visibility in the way it's as going to define ourselves together, so the new narrative that we have together, we need to come with to, at least to define four concepts. So I don't have time to go through this now, but I want, just want to mention the concepts. And the first one that you can't uh, uh, avoid is the question of authority. Because the, pr the process of secularization was about distinguishing authorities. And all the discussions that you have at the end is who has the authority to define. And when, for example, in a secular, uh, normal uh, dynamic, no one from the state should define something which is coming from the religious. It's not what is happening now. It's not. And it's not even in the United States of America as it is in India, as it is in France. And to take France as an exception in the whole process, I see now in the British government people telling us what is Islamic and what should be Islamic and what is the moderate Muslim. So I think that this is a question of authority. The whole process was about distinguishing and now there is a taking over, so I think that this question of authority is important, and we can't only speak about structures if we don't speak about power. So I think here that it is also something which is important, and in the way we have to deal with uh, uh, this visibility. There, there is another uh, word that uh, Tariq was using, and I think I have great difficulty uh, uh, when I'm using it. It's the concept of neutrality. What do we mean by neutrality? And when, for example, in my country, Switzerland, as well as it is in France, and it's not understood the same way in the States or in Britain, or even in, 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 in India, for example, is what it is to be neutral. For example, when you are representing the state. And if, for example, if I go uh, 60 kilometers from Geneva, if you are a civil servant, and you are visible with your uh, religious dress, you are challenging the neutrality of the state. In the, the, the French and the, the Swiss French discourse, it's acknowledged, which is not at all the same in, in Britain or in the States. If I dress with uh, uh, the headscarf, for example, I could be a teacher then you can't be a teacher, because you are challenging neutrality. So what are we talking about? What is the neutral space and the neutral sphere when it comes to visibility? What in your visibility is challenging the neutrality of this, the open space? And then in France, it's, it's for many, the more open-minded in France are saying, you know what, it's normal for the teachers not to wear headscarves, not for the students. That's the more open discourse, the progressive discourse in France. It's about this. If you go to Britain, say, what's that? What does it mean? Neutrality is what, in what you teach, not 
who is teaching it or who is being taught. Wow, yes, thank you. So, so, so that's also discussed. So this is the second concept. And uh, I would say that uh, once again in the whole discussion, and I, I, I know that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 12 years or 15 years ago when I was talking about citizenship, one of those who was saying Tariq Ramadan is very French in his way of putting things is Tariq Mudud himself. He saw me as very French, and he's not wrong. I'm very French coming from the French culture. But there was a concept that was not very much used, and, and you see now when you go to the States or even in the European context, the concept of citizenship and this belonging to a society. And I think that this is also something that, that, that we have to talk about. Is why? Because, in fact, it's not only a legal concept. When, for example, uh, Olivier Roy was saying, the starting point of the discussion is to, to, to agree on the fact that there is a legal framework that we abide by and you are belonging to a society. Yes, the only thing that is happening now, it's in the name of this specific visibility, you have an informal citizenship, which is not the same. So we have, in the perception, Whatever you do with the legal framework, if you are perceived as a foreign citizen as it is now, the law is not going to be implemented in an equal footing. And this is what is happening now. So this, the theoretical discussion about secularism and the equal opportunity and equal treatment, if we are not tackling the other side of the spectrum, and this is why I was saying for 20 years I have been dealing with the legal issues and I just now uh, realized that that was a first step. It could be the end of the discussion. It could be the final step. We have to go further than that and talk about uh, 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 what I was talking about by saying, for example, what you have in Pew, for example, by saying the Muslims in Europe, they don't have a problem. They are not alienated. And I say the, the three L's I was talking about, they got the language, they abide by the law, and they are loyal to the country. This is happening now. And it's happening, so it's not a question of religiously or culturally being alienated. Alienation is somewhere else, which is not with the law, is not with the language, is not with the loyalty, is with the perception and this visibility that is questioning their belonging to the society. So we have much more problem with the sense of belonging within secularity than the sense of abiding by the law. So I think we have to be very cautious not to reduce multiculturalism or what we are talking about, about the legal framework that is an open one if we are not tackling the definitions and what we, are, we want to, to deal with as uh, uh, our objectives. And I would say that uh, I would go further than that by saying we need a serious uh, discussion about uh, living together and coexistence, not the pacific coexistence, but active coexistence, proactive coexistence, dealing with religions and not only with cultures, which is also something I think which is important. I'm sorry, I have to go very quickly on, 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 on this, and as I have only three minutes left. Uh, um, um, so this is what I, I, I wanted to, to say here. In, in terms of uh, uh, going to uh, uh, defining the concept, authority, uh, neutrality, citizenship, and this uh, living together uh, from a religious background and questioning the narrative and not only the legal thing. And, and I want to question the narrative of what multiculturalism is. The narrative, what, what, what is the object? At the end of the day, don't reduce this to a legal framework. It's not going to work. So we have to be very deep in this. Uh, 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 so last thing that I want to say, the risk that we are facing now is on both sides, so to speak, I'm speaking here as a European Muslim, a Western Muslim, and saying on both sides, just uh, um, accept from me for just one second this binary thing. I'm completely opposed to this, Islam versus the West. But just we are dealing here with two uh, so to speak, communities. And we are uh, facing the risk to legalize everything on both sides. The Islamic answer, it's a legal answer, it's possible, we have fatawa and we have all this. So we legalize Islam, we make it a legal issue. On the other side, we legalize our belonging to the society by saying, this is the, the, you have to abide by the law of the country. So this double process of legalizing the issue is problematic for both because at the end it's not going to solve the problem. So I think that uh, fatawa coming from Muslims and scholars 
they are the first step, but they can't give us the solution of this, uh, uh, what I was talking about. And this is why I'm saying, at the same time, we need a critical discourse from within the Islamic tradition in the West. So, so we can't also go without this, which is a critical reassessment. And when I was talking to uh, uh, before this, is all the work that I'm trying to, de to do on ethics is very much to challenge the legal dimension, this reduction to, uh, the Islamic teaching to the legal. Why? Because this is not where we are tackling the issue of all what we are talking about here, sense of belonging, multiculturalism, challenging cultures, questioning the objectives and not only the legality of you being here. Because you can be legally uh, abiding, but alienated intellectually, psychologically, culturally, religiously. So I think that this is a, a big question. And, and the last two things is, is to stop Islamizing. And we, I, 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 this is also something which is important, Islamizing all the issues. So there is no, I would say exactly the same, there is no religious alienation, but there are socioeconomic alienations and stigma. We have to deal with this. I mean, on both sides, once again, just for the sake of the argument, we have to stop Islamizing, ethnicizing all the problem. But this is also part of the discussion that we have to come here. It's too much religion could act against religion. And this is why I'm always saying to the Muslims, stop talking about religion sometimes, because it's not a religious issue. So stop making it a religious, uh, uh, and, and uh, one last point also, which now I think it's, uh, it's, I come back to the us together with the discussion. I wanted so much to prove that you can be a Muslim citizen, a European Muslim citizen, a Western Muslim citizen, that at the end, the focus on this made me realize that uh, I'm falling into the trap of also uh, um, uh, a dominant narrative. That if citizenship at the end takes over our common humanity, it's going to be counterproductive. You know what is why I'm scared of? Is very well integrated Muslim citizens, European Muslim citizens, American Muslim citizens, that they are so much focused on our citizenship that they are forgetting our common humanity with migrants, with what is happening in Europe, in Lampedusa. And we have exactly the same frame. We have to be very cautious that our will to bring us together is a reduction of understanding our common humanity. And I would say here, citizenship could act against the religious values that we are promoting. My religious values about common humanity. But if I want so much to be involved in this multicultural framework, citizens, equal rights, and all things, and at the expense, expense are at the price of forgetting common humanity, that's the problem. And it's coming from this globalized discussion about identity and the legal framework. I think it's very dangerous also to be very, we, we need in this discussion to also understand the impact of what is the non, non uh, 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 seen and non said in the discussion. Thank you.